Cornerstone Full Gospel Church is located at 2517 2nd Avenue, Columbus, Georgia, 31904. We would like to invite everyone to come and worship with us, regardless of race, gender, or social status. Cornerstone is a nonprofit organization that believes in the whole Bible and allows you to worship freely as God sees fit.
some honor. Give him some glory. For it's an awesome thing to be able to gather amongst God's people and to come in God's house and just say, thank you, Lord. There's a lot of places in the world where they just wish that they can do what you're doing right now. But here you are, gathered in the name of the Lord here to worship him, to say hallelujah to the king. Praise, honor, majesty be to the Lord of lords and the king of kings. You're Lord. You're king. You're a savior. But guess what? You're friend. Amen, your friend. Hallelujah. For God is good. And all the time? God is good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll recognize who this fellow is. And I want everybody to remember a little bit, if you can, the scripture that I gave out to begin with. Because it's going to kind of work into this scripture that we're going into now. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, him whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he and his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are they not twelve hours in the day? If any man walketh in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if any man walketh in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. Then said his disciple, Lord, if he sleeps, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoke of things of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly. How many people had to have God tell you plainly something? Get a little hard-headed, get a little stubborn, and God has to say plainly. Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sake that I was not there. To the intent you may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Mm -hmm. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had laid him in a grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. We're going somewhere. Stay with me just a minute. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to confront them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was come, went out to meet him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See it in our faith? Yeah, I, I, I got you. We have real good times believing in the God of the far off. Uh, in the resurrection, in the sweet by and by, he's going to be there for us. Huh? He's going to do these things when we gather around the throne. But no, we have trouble with the now faith part. The now faith part. Okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Back up, back up. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said, 
She went her way and called Mary, your sister, secretly, saying, The Master has come and called for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews that were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep. How many people said that? Oh, well, let's go up there to the grave and let's pray with you. I know you've had a rough... It's going to be all right, sister. It's going to be all... You get friends all of a sudden you never even knew came around. They may be talking about you like you're a dog until you pass away or something. Then you got all these people all crying and weeping, all dressed up. You ain't even seen half of them. You know, why couldn't you help me when I was alive, right? No, we got to come. So that's these people that we're talking about. Hey, 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 come on. We're going to go up there. We're going to get up there. You know, does anybody remember paid mourners? Is anybody old enough in here to remember? They used to pay people to come and mourn and cry over somebody's casket. You know, it's like, well, I want it to look good. So I know my husband, you know, he didn't really have all those kind of friends, but I'm going to pay somebody to come up, you know, so they can weep and do all those kinds of things. There were, there were professionals at it, professional paid mourners. So anyway, so that, that's kind of what she's dealing with here. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came unto her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled and said, Where have thou laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Here's your scripture. Jesus wept. Y'all think y'all can remember that one? John eleven thirty five. 35. That's the shortest one in the Bible. Amen. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaned in himself coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I say it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus! Come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave cloth, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. Amen. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Okay. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Amen. We're going to stop there. How many people's heard the story of Lazarus? How many people's heard this? This has been preached since I was that big throughout the church and everything. But let me, let me bring it to you a little different way. Let me think it. Let me let you know a little bit about this story. Not only the story itself of Lazarus, or the great and mighty works of what happened, but I want you to, as we start getting into the message, I want you to kind of place yourself in that situation and take the scripture that we got before. It's time to quit going around the mountain, but time to head ye north. So whenever we get to the time, I want you to kind of focus in your mind. What is dead and what's buried in my grave? What's stinky out there? What if they came up and said to me, Oh, don't give them any chance, any hope. They're dead. What they do surely stinketh. It's stinky. It's stinky. 
I want you to think about those things. Those people that's condemned you out there and talked about you throughout your life and throughout your walk and think, oh, they're not ever, they're not ever going to be anything. There's no way they're coming back from this. I'm going to take them and I'm going to put them in the grave and we're going to roll a big stone in front of them. And as that stone lay there, well, they're dead. We've got this thing taken care of and they're out of the way. But what they don't know, what they don't know is the same action in burying, the same action is planting. Amen. So they may think they've got you shoved in a hole and all oh, they're done with and they're out of the way. But what they don't know is God is just planting you in a position to get you ripe up till the time to where he stands there in front of you and says, Lazarus, come forth, come forth unto me. And that stall will start shaking. And what had to happen? The people had to help out, didn't they? Because Jesus came up to the grave of Lazarus, right? And he says, Martha, do you think that I can raise him? And she said, well, we all would say, because we, we kind of can go just so far. We can go to the grave, and that's kind of where we end. Because we see death as the cessation of life, or as somebody passing away. But really what true death is in the Bible is the separation from the Father. So if you're, we say you're spiritually dead, or you're dead, then that doesn't mean your physical body is laid down. But that means you're separated from God. In the beginning, God said, don't eat of the fruit or you'll sure die. They ate of the fruit. They said, yeah, we didn't die. No, they died because that's the separation from the Father, right? Yeah. Amen. So we see it that way. We see it, uh-oh, uh-oh, in the sweet by and by. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he'll be all right. Oh, we'll see him over on the other side. We're limiting the master to what we think. We're trying to put him in this little box. Yeah, he's going to be he's going to be fine in the afterlife. When we all get to heaven singing, "Oh, what a glorious time it will be." But Jesus is coming to you right now saying, "What can I do for you now? What can I do for you in this place? Roll back the stone and let's get ready to do this thing." Some of us are suffering through financial issues. Some of us are suffering through spiritual, family, other issues. They're dead and they're buried. And it's been sitting there for a while. And what do our brothers and sisters say? Don't go over there because it's stinky. That's been in there four days. That's stinking. Not can we help you out? Let me pray for you. Let me take care of you. That's stinking. That's, that's stinky. He said, roll the stone back. So they did. They rolled the stone back. So you, you need help, right? That's your brothers and sisters praying. God, help. God, take care of them. Let's roll the stone back. And then Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And at this time when I was speaking about this in the sermon, you should be thinking in your mind, what is that thing that's been dead and buried in my life? That financial problem or that problem with my family or these other problems that I've been dealing with. You should be thinking, is it time? Is the master getting ready to call that forth? Am I involved in this or I'm just a bystander? Did I come out there with Mary just to weep? Oh, I'm so sorry, sister. It's just so bad. It's a rough thing. Oh, man. Yeah, you get all kinds of comfort until it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Then you're at the ER by yourself. And you're calling everybody in your cell phone and nobody's home. You know they're home. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. But nobody's even calling you back. Then you're down there doing everything you can and you're going, God, you try not to question. You're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. And you just get off and you get alone and you start praying with God. And then that peace and that calm falls upon you. And you know that peace that passes all understanding. That thing that people say out there that they say really don't exist. You know, you're just emotional or you're just this or you're just that. Well, I got to tell you, brother and sister, you not experience my God if you think it's just emotion or feelings. My God will come down when I don't feel anything. When I'm in that darkest place, in that darkest hole of depression and despair, up in the casket, in the crib, my God looks down upon me and he has compassion for my God cares. My God is the God of love. That's your God. That's the God we're speaking of. Your God of love, right? He had compassion. He believed. He knew what was going to happen. He's the son of God. He knew that if, even if he had thought of it, Lazarus would have came forth. He didn't even have to come there, did he? He could have stayed over where he was. Say, uh, 
Yeah. What about the, the centurion, the guy that said, just send the word and my daughter will be healed. Right. Jesus just sent the word, right? Yeah. Well, why did he wait so long? Because after, after four days, the Pharisees couldn't say anymore that the spirit could return because they, they believed that only after three days, the spirit could return to the body. But after four days, that was just gone away as well. So he's, after the first day, Lazarus had already passed away. They sent a runner out to find Jesus. Anybody ever sent a runner to find Jesus? Huh? I have. I've been in situations before where I didn't know which way to turn. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know how to do it. Didn't know. So I sent a runner after Jesus. I, I go to the pastor. I go to somebody and say, I need some help. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do, you know. My child's in jail. I don't know what to do about that kind of thing. I, I, I don't even know where the jail is. You know, what do I do? See, so send a runner out. You send for help. But sometimes you can't wait. And you, just think of the parents sitting there. How many people has been on the other side of it just sitting there going, man, something's got to happen and you're worried and you're stressed. And the doc says, I'm doing everything I can do. Just go back here and sit in the waiting room. Go away. Go out in the waiting room and sit down. It's going to be, we're going to do what we can. And you're like all stressed out. And you're sending runners here left and right. And you're hoping somebody tells me something. Just tell me something. I just need to know, man. I just got to know. And then they just kind of look at you like, you bother me. Yeah, that's my family there. I mean, it may not be yours, but that's mine. You know, I'm doing everything I can for them. I sent a runner out. They're dying, you know. He's dying. That was their brother, dying. That was the one that carried the baggage, the luggage and things for Jesus when he came to town. He stayed there. He was the one that took care of Jesus and took care of the disciples, you know. He was there. That was Lazarus. That was what he did. Jesus loved him, but yet he didn't come. And then Lazarus passed away. And the family's still sitting there trying to figure out what in the world happened, God. Anybody ever thought that? Be honest. What happened, God? What, was it me? Was it you? What, I don't know what, what happened, God. I don't understand. But see, what you don't get, what you don't understand and what I don't get is that we're looking at a single piece of puzzle in the middle of this big puzzle. God sees the big picture of what's going to happen. He knew he was going to resurrect him from the dead, but all the family could see was that he was passed and that he was deceased. They were hurting so bad that Mary wouldn't even leave the house. Martha's out doing whatever, but Mary's sitting there, and she's got all the people hanging out with her going, it's going to be okay. He's kind of crying, and, you know, yeah, yeah. Not only is it the people that are trying to give you a pep talk, it's going to be okay, but then you got the other side that's going, man, he sure looked bad. He, he looks terrible. It's like, thanks, you, you know, appreciate it. No, no, he, I'm, he looks bad. He may not make it through the night. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I get it. No, 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 you don't under, yeah, I understand. Okay, I got it. Then you get a little short with people and like, whatever. Uh, yeah. How about praying with me? Like Jesus said, can you watch with me just one hour? Can you pray with me just one hour? That's all I'm asking. Can you at least send back a text and say, I'm praying with you? We always say, when, a lot of times when somebody says, I got a problem or something, uh, can you pray with me? You hear the people go, bless them, Lord, and walk off. You know why they say that? They say that because they can't, they, they get out there and they say, well, bless them, Lord, and they get busy at softball games or baseball games or football games or whatever, and they forget to pray for me because it's not affecting them directly. I can't get away from it. I can't walk away from that cancerous tumor. I can't walk away from that deceased family. I got to get down on it in my face before God. You can walk away. Pray with me. Can you watch with me one hour? Just one hour just one can you do it can you do it mary she's in there going i just don't know what to do martha's waiting out there and jesus comes back and he comes up there it's been four days and like we said he asked martha he said what what do you think i can take care of this situation jesus is going to come to you in your hour of need in your crisis, we can be with you. We can pray with you. We can do everything we can do. But we can't go any further than a certain line. At that line is between you and God. You and Jesus. 
You need to have that personal relationship with Jesus that you can say, Lord, my brother has passed away. He's gone. Can you do something for me? You need to have that personal relationship with God that you can go before him and say, I really don't like this. I don't really understand this, God, but you know best. Thy will be done. Can y'all say that? Does anybody, can anybody say thy will be done? It's hard, ain't it? It is. It's easy to say thy will be done for this sister or this sister, but when it's this brother, it's hard. It's hard. God, I've been through a bankruptcy, and I know that things are tight right now, and I know you got a blessing for me, God, but thy will be done. And then the check don't come in from work, and you go, thy will be done. Really? But you're really saying, please pay the rent. You can't tell God what to do. You just have to go with it, right? We just, we just follow. He's going to take care of you because he loves you. He loves you. So we get to that point to where he said, he comes up there to Martha and he asks her, do you think that I can raise him? And then she gets into a religious conversation with him. Yeah, you can. Some, you are the, someday, you know, he's going to be raised with the rest of us. And he's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm standing here in front of you saying that I see your problem. I see your situation. What do you want me to do? And she's just making all these excuses. You got the master right there. You got the answer right there in front of you. All you got to do is talk to him. But yet we get so wrapped up in the what is the who's it's and why is it's and all that that we forget to just fall down at his feet and say, can you do something? My brother's dead. Can you bring him back? Cornerstone Full Gospel Church is located at 2517 Second Avenue in Columbus, Georgia. We would like to invite everyone to come out and worship with us. Our services are Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Sunday evening, and Thursday nights at 7. Come join us at Cornerstone, where we want to see you blessed.